Miyamoto Musashi, the greatest swordsman of all time, the man who won over 60 duels, the madman who eventually became a sage. You probably heard it all, but this right here got to be the most epic retelling of the story you've ever made. So let's get into it. Japan, 1584, year of the monkey. A little samurai was born. His birth name was Shinmen Takezo. Uh, no, no, actually, Miyamoto Bensuki. Or uh, Niten Dorakai. Niten Doraku. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Everyone knows him as Musashi Miyamoto. And all you need to know about his childhood is that he was born with black air forces and all the implications that comes with it. His dad, Munisai, was a renowned martial artist who was a master of the sword style of the Jite. Yeah, that's a Jite right there. Why does it look like a cactus? Anyways, he was a martial arts master. And let's just say that him and his son were not the best of buddies. According to the old text, Musashi would always speak back and that would cause arguments. Over time, the arguments grew more and more violent till one day, it just went too far. Hey, Musashi, go take a shower. You're always smelling bad, man. Oh, come on, dad. I already told you that not bathing is what I must do in order to become number one under the sun. Look, Musashi, cut it out. Cut out that crap. I don't care about that. As long as you live under my roof, you will bathe. Bro, you don't have your priorities straight. That's why you'll, you'll never be one of the greats. Then his dad was like, what? He took his katana and threw it at Musashi. Musashi dodged it and was like, You know what? I've had enough of this shit. And his dad was like, Oh yeah? Well, leave and never come back. They say that Musashi was a sword saint. Well, his life did not begin in the most holy manner. Anyways, being kicked out by his father, Musashi had to find somewhere to go. So he went to his uncle's temple. His uncle was a warrior in the past, but had now chosen a life of peace as a monk. One could think that this environment would soften Musashi. You couldn't be further from the truth. He started training even harder, letting out his anger and frustration towards his dad by kicking and swinging his sword at trees all day long. No one could stop him and eventually one day he would get an opportunity to put his training to the test. He was only 13. One day, a samurai placed a challenge asking anyone that thing they were strong enough to kill him, to step forward. Musashi started rubbing his hands and was like, Yeah, I want some of that. The samurai's name was Harima Kirei of the Shinto Ryu. At first, he thought Musashi was joking. Leo didn't know that this kid was the embodiment of black air force energy. Everyone jumped in to try to stop Musashi. But it was all in vain. He was determined. Even after his uncle begged him to stop and to apologize to Arima and run away from this fight, Musashi did not care. Musashi and Arima faced off. And in that same instant, Musashi charged at him knocked him unconscious with a wooden staff and proceeded to beat him to the death at the age of 13. Now Musashi had acquired a taste for battle. At the age of 16, he defeated another guy by the name of Tadashima Akiyama. But to be honest, don't bother remember his name. He's just another irrelevant side character. Anyways, at the age of 21, Musashi decided to go on an adventure. He went to Kyoto and in his own words, I fought duels 
with several adepts of the swords from famous schools, but I never lost. He participated in a war, and even though he fought hard and well, let's just say that his faction got whooped. After that, Musashi disappeared. No one heard of him for years. During that time, he trained and meditated. Basically, he was doing sage mode training. Musashi's beef with the Yoshioka school. Musashi would often go to dojos to challenge the strongest people in it. And now he arrived at the Yoshioka school. He challenged Yoshioka Seijiro who was the master of the school. One thing you need to know about Musashi is that arriving late to duels on purpose was a full-blown part of his fighting style. And nine times out of 10, this little strategy will piss off his opponent so much that they will forget to fight intelligently and then make small mistakes. In that era of Japanese history, being late was one of the highest levels of disrespect there could be. And according to Tim Ferriss, it would be like coming over to meet someone at their house, shaking their hand, sitting down at the dinner table, then like getting up on the dinner table and taking a shit right on their plate. Anyways, Musashi overpowered Seijiro with relative ease and crippled him. This act enraged Seijiro's brother who was now out for revenge. He challenged Musashi on the spot. I'm not even gonna mention his name, but guess what? Guess what happened to him? Well, let's just say he got turned into a hashtag. Having embarrassed two of the strongest fighters of the Yoshioka school, Seijiro's youngest brother thought to himself, no, 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 I'm not having it. This guy just made us look crazy. Nah, fam. He ain't living this place alive. And that's on God. He was 12 or 13. Maybe 12. Anyways, he was really young. He set up a duel with Musashi, scheduled for another day. This time, Musashi arrived way before everyone. He did that because he knew that this little brat was scheming something. So Musashi waited on high grounds and realized that this was no goddamn duel. It was an ambush. This guy came with arrows, grenades, and shit. Okay, let me stop the cap. They came with 60 men, including archers. All of that just for one guy. Come on. You gotta put respect on Musashi's name. When Musashi saw that this was a setup, it triggered something in him. I think it was the Sharingan or something like that. No, it was something else. He went into a frenzy and charged at the boy, killing him immediately. Then took out his second sword and started cutting down anyone that stood in front of him as he fled. That night, the legendary Niten Chiryu swordmanship style was born. After this, Miyamoto traveled throughout Japan to find worthy opponents and to truly become number one under the sun. He will fight anyone that was strong. He even fought monks, then some weird dude that was wielding a sickle chain. Why would you bring a sickle chain to a sword fight? He was kinda strong though, no, I'm not gonna lie. But you know Musashi, we still put him on a t-shirt and turned him into a hashtag. Over the course of time and victories, something changed in Musashi. His aspirations were changing. He was starting to think of matters other than simply just defeating other men. He started thinking about his place in the universe. Around that time, he reunited with his father who ended up passing his knowledge and teaching onto Musashi. He had a few duels after that, including his face off with Muzo, Go, no Suke Katsuyoki, who was a master of the five foot staff 
Some people say that it was a draw, however, that's hard to prove. Nevertheless, the two became good friends. Musashi vs Sasaki Kojiro Sasaki Kojiro, also known as the Demon of the West, was the opposite of Musashi in many aspects. Sasaki was more of the perfect gentleman samurai, always well dressed, had good etiquettes, was sophisticated. Legends even say that he was quite a flamboyant chap. Basically, he was everything Musashi wasn't. Musashi was a ronin, more of a vagabond. But one thing they had in common was their tremendous strength with the sword. The duel between the two was supposed to take place on the lower islands. On the way to the duel, Musashi was carving a wooden sword that was similar to Sasaki's great Odachi out of the wood from the boat he was traveling on. Kojiro was set as the favorite. He too was undefeated, just like Musashi. He was younger and on top of that was favored by the Shogun. However, Musashi had one thing, experience. And he had just started practicing Zazen meditation. Or you can just call it Sage Mode, really. Seriously though, Musashi arrived late, which enraged Sasaki. Then Sasaki was like, Yo, yo, you come late, you, you, you disrespect me and the whole dojo. Nah, 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 nah. nah. Sasaki then threw his cupboard in the sea and Musashi was like, Bruh, really? You really gonna throw your scabbard in the sea? You must believe you're going to lose. Enraged, Sasaki then charged at Musashi. They fought hard. They were quiet even for some time even. All of a sudden, Sasaki used his signature move. Tsubame Gaishi, a swift two-stroke technique that was executed so smoothly that it resembled the flight of a sparrow. All of a sudden, Musashi's headband was split in half and fell to the ground. But Kojiro's skull was crushed, smashed, and he lay there on the floor, lifeless. This was arguably Musashi's greatest victory. I'm going to skip forward to his older days because after that fight with Kojiro, I, don't know, I didn't find anything that was as epic and you can find most of it online. So in that time, he moved to Edo, adopted a son, opened a dojo for a brief period of time, fought in another battle, blah 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 blah. But now back to the nitty and gritty. Remember how I told you that Musashi was starting to change and beginning to think about his place in the universe. Over the years, one thing was on his mind. How can I use the way of the sword to make a difference? To give life instead of taking it. Towards the end of his life, he retired in a cave and compiled all of his military philosophy into writings. One of them was the Book of Five Rings or Go Rin No Sho. It could be said that this book is for warriors. But if you think about it, many aspects of life are similar to war and fighting. That's why the principles in this book have been used by people of all walks, all over the world, including myself. Musashi passed at the age of 61, but his philosophies are eternal. Thank you for watching this video. It's been a pleasure recording this and putting it out there. I know that there are many Musashi stories, but this was just one of them. Anyways, make sure you like, subscribe, and share.